What's up, everybody? Corey used bloody history. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a good meal. I know I did. So today I wasn't really going to do a show. I'm just kind of taking in this research and enjoying the Thanksgiving weekend. But I need to put down some of these thoughts that I'm having because, oh my God, this... This, uh, all the data that we have on Oswald in the Marines, particularly with the stuff surrounding Corregidor and Taiwan, and if he went to certain places, when he went to certain places, um, why he didn't go to certain places, um, there's a lot going on here, and I am having trouble kind of interpreting it. Uh, what I'm, what I'm basically seeing is that Oswald got in trouble a lot, he shot himself. He did all kinds of things to avoid going other places, is what it seems like. So, the first incident of October 27th, where he shoots himself. Oh my God, do we have some conflicting information? So the medical record really is the absolute proof of Oswald being in two places at once. It just is. Uh, more about Taiwan, more, more, more related to Taiwan than the incident that happened October the 27th. So on October the 27th, let me see if I can find my damn slide here. So we have a lot of crazy stuff going on surrounding this shooting we have conflicting information. Hope you're not surprised. So, what I'm gathering here is that Oswald, well, Oswald shoots himself. He does it on purpose. It's clear he does it on purpose. Friday, October 27th. I'm sorry, I don't know what day, what day it was. It's 27th of October, 57. And then he's in the hospital. He's transferred to Yokosuka. And he's in a hospital till November 15th. I'm somewhat convinced that it's during this time that Oswald, Harvey Oswald, made his way to Corregidor. The Corregidor situation is is really interesting because I, I everyone keeps saying that that date of the John Wayne photo is in January of '58, but by January of '58, by if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, Harvey Oswald's back at Atsugi or wherever the hell he is, or maybe even back in New Orleans with Palmer McBride. We don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But it appears as though there was a lot of covering in the documentation. So I found my slides on the 27th of October for the the shooting. It says here, and I'll go ahead and I'll read this to you. This is a transcript that's in his official paperwork. There's a lot of stuff missing from the official paperwork. I found a transcript of the medical data And it's very long. And when you go back and compare the medical data transcript to the medical data on the sheet, you can tell what was presented as um, Donna Bidian Exhibit 1. You can tell that that was heavily, heavily um, altered. Also, the one that we have, the Donna Bidian one that we have is only like 30 or 40 pages. And the one that they were reading out at the Warren Commission was like 100 and something pages. So we're missing a ton of information from the Don't Obedient exhibit, exhibit, which is supposed to be a complete transcript of Oswald's medical history, but it's just clearly not. So 27th of October, 57, diagnosis, wound, missile, upper left arm, gunshot, no A or N involvement, number A255. I don't know what A or N involvement is. It says one within command, work, Two, patient dropped 45 caliber automatic. Pistol discharge when struck the floor and a missile struck the patient in the left arm, causing the injury. See, it says 45 caliber, but it turns out to be a 22, right? See, that's just another inconsistency. This 18-year male accidentally shot himself in the left arm with a sidearm, reportedly of 22 caliber. Examination revealed the wound of entrance in the medical portion or in the medial portion of the left upper arm just above the elbow. There was no evidence of neurologic, circulatory, or bony injury. 
The wound of entrance was allowed to heal, and the missile was then excised through a separate incision two inches above the wound. The missile appears to be a 22 slug. The wound healed well, and the patient was discharged from duty, or discharged to duty. Then we have another inconsistency here. It says 10557, foreign body removal from extremities, but it's actually 115. November 5th, 57, appears to be when they did the surgery. Foreign body removal from extremities, left upper arm number 926. So the fucking problem that we have is that we have a, well, we have numerous problems. The next document that is in Oswald's, the Donabedian exhibit number one. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. This says Oswald Lee H. PFC 1653230, date 102757, complaint, gunshot wound left forearm, bandaged. Transferred USNH3923, and it's got initials. It looks like J-E-E. I don't know who. I'll have to go through and compare the initials to who was on duty. But it says he was shot in the forearm, not in the upper left arm. This is a big fucking problem. But hey, it gets worse. Who was it? Maybe, was it Powers? I don't, I think it was Powers. Let me see if I got Powers stuff right here. Powers... If I'm not mistaken, he heard about Oswald shooting himself, and he heard that he got shot in the leg or something. That's what he heard. Now, let me read you this from the transcript of the, it was supposed to be the Donabidian exhibit, but it's not. It's clearly the Donabidian exhibit has been edited, and this has way more information. So... November 4th, 1957, request date 11-4, pertinent clinical history, AP, plus lateral left arm foreign body. What is a lateral left arm? Let me read that. Lateral left arm. Mm, I can't tell. I'm not a doctor. Anyway, it says lateral left arm minus foreign body. Then it says Oswald Lee H, PFC, UMC, 855557. 4th of November, 57, left elbow, AP, and lateral views. There are several small areas of metallic density, just medial to the medial epicondyle. There is a larger area of metallic density, which lies adjacent to the medial aspect of the shaft of the femur approximately four inches from its distal articular surface. This larger fragment measures roughly one and a half by one and a half centimeters in size. There may be a metallic foreign body in the soft tissue of the forearm. However, it is thought the area of metallic density is due to an artifact. Hmm? There may be a metallic foreign body in the soft tissues of the forearm. However, it is thought that the area of metallic density is due to an artifact. Maybe what he means is an artifact in the x-ray. And then it says, impression, multiple small and minute metallic frag foreign bodies in the soft tissue of the distal left upper arm. So on one fucking document, which is the transcript, which has been deleted from the main record, um, it's, it, it lists all three of these. Forearm, distal left upper arm, and the fucking femur, which corresponds to how Powers heard that Oswald was shot in the fucking leg. Also, one thing I'm catching here is that it says date requested 11-4. Pertinent clinical history. AP plus lateral arm foreign body. But they already, he's been in the fucking hospital since the 27th. He was diagnosed on the 27th. Why are they requesting a new examination on the 4th of November before the surgery? And why are they bringing up the femur and the forearm? None of this makes sense. Then I happened to stumble across an article by a guy named, I think his name is Beach, B-E-E-C-H. He says, I'm going to read this article to you because it's rather fascinating. At anniversary of JFK's assassination, VOC man recalls military service with Oswald. This is from redrocknews.com. says, he was in our outfit, but I never really met him personally. He said, I knew 
who he was, but he was just odd. He had no social friends, no buddies to speak about, no buddies that he hung out with. He was a loner. The first real interaction with him, or when I first noticed him, was when he shot himself. I was a sergeant, and I went across to him and I asked, What the expletive did you do, Oswald? His response is something I will never forget as long as I live. He said, I do believe I shot myself. Who the hell talks like that? Beach said Oswald shot himself in the calf with a twenty two caliber pistol, one he's guessing was purchased in Japan. I believe it was a deliberate act to get out of the Marine Corps free shot, he said, referring to the placement of the wound and Oswald's reaction afterwards. Now, check this out. Some reports over the years say that Oswald shot himself in the elbow. Beach, Beach disputes that. No, I was right there. That was the last time I saw him in the barracks. They took him away. We'd go to Chow and we'd see the MPs bring him in. He was not allowed to associate with anyone. He was under lock and key. The thing is, none of us really paid much attention to him. He wasn't important to us. At the time, he was just a guy who shot himself to get out of the Marine Corps. So, we have something going on here. And like I said, this could probably this could be all cover. I mean, why is it that on the examination on November 4th of 57... It says that there are several small areas of metallic density just medial to the medial epicondyle. There's a larger area of metallic density which lies adjacent to the medial aspect of the shaft of the femur, approximately four inches from its distal articular surface. This larger fragment measuring one and a half by one and a half centimeters in size. There may be metallic foreign body in the soft tissues of the forearm. However, it is thought that the area of metallic density is due to an artifact This is on November 4th. That's seven days after the 27th, or maybe eight days, give or take it, so about a week. One thing, one pattern I'm noticing constantly here in trying to figure out these schedules, which are obviously not correct, and having that photograph of the Biloxi school that Lee Oswald was in graduating on June 18th, trying to use that as a point of reference, what I'm finding is a lot, and I mean a lot, of these notations in the in the record they indicate that one of the Oswalds was a week behind the other it's just a pattern I'm starting to pick up on and I, and I can't give you too many specific examples but in reference to Owen Dejanovich and his being at uh, and his being uh, at um, Biloxi, literally one week after the known Oswald photo, he graduates one week later. I believe that was like the twenty fourth or twenty fifth of June. He graduates, and from there he goes to. Um, he has a, he has time off, and then he goes just like the pattern that everyone else follows. They go to El Toro, where this is the weird part. So Oswald, on his paperwork, it indicates that he. Let me see. I got it right here. That he's set to show up on the 9th of July. And he has like a month of testing, and then he's set to be out in at Sugi or arriving there on the twelfth. So then you have Owen Dejanovich, whose arrival date out there is one week later. It's exactly seven days later, and he was in the Biloxi course that graduated seven days after Oswald's. Okay, so here's another problem. The other problem is that Oswald being at Biloxi, one week, graduating one week after the course he, we assume he's in, um, the problem with that is that it contradicts his own handwritten autobiography and stating where he was. But if you remember that autobiography that he wrote, that short brief t uh, time that he was in the Marines, he basically wrote out 
all the places that he was. And it consumed the entire time he was in the Marines. But then after that, he referenced Biloxi, like Biloxi wasn't part of his main schedule. He mentions Biloxi like it's an afterthought. So Alan Feld, once again, I, I'm, I'm finding that Alan Feld could not have been right. A lot of these people could not have been right about what they're saying about Oswald unless we have a third Oswald. And the idea of throwing a third Oswald into this mix just fucking is, it, it would kill me. Another thing that I've noticed in going over my notes, and I'm, just, I'm trying to just wrap up some loose ends here. Another thing I noticed is that ICT training is what it's, no, D-O-I-N-S, duty instruction, ICT training. From 120.57 through February 26th. So when I looked up ICT training, now I have three different ICT trainings. ICT training is combat training, but ICT training is also communications training. And the third thing I found ICT training for was if you're going to be an officer in a foreign country, that's what, that's the third type of ICT training. So I don't know why they're notating it as ICT training. Here's another thing I found. Sorry about the randomness of my thoughts. I'm just kind of covering things I've picked up on. So one thing that Feld did say, and he said this about being all the way all the way through um, Memphis, right? But it's not really Memphis. It's a, it's a town near Memphis. One thing he said was that Oswald was already, always carrying around a little um, a little book with him. That he a little blue or black book that he thought was some kind of like Russian book. Well, guess what? A book matching that description turns up in Oswald's property, and Powers, who I can't figure Powers out. Powers might Powers got some issue. Powers ended up getting murdered. I didn't mention that, but he was murdered. You know, I don't have the notes up in front up, uh, up here to uh, pull from. I should have thought this through a little better before getting started, but he was murdered. So I can't really seem to find much detail on this. I got one of my guys out looking for information, but it appears that in late 67 or early 68, he was found dead by an apparent suicide. He was shot in the right side of his head and his gun was found in his left hand. So you tell me what that means. But Powers, he also stated that he saw Oswald studying Russian, and I'll read it here. He says, he stated that he also vaguely recalls that while at Atsugi in Japan, Oswald was studying Russian, and he vaguely recalled that Oswald carried with him a dark blue or black book, with, uh, which Powers believed was a Russian language book. Well, that was seen by, that's seen by Feld. But Feld, F the Feld story is wild because, number one, there's no Alan R. Feld in any of the Marine Diaries. But in all the places he said he was, there's an Alexander Feld. Did they change the record? I don't know. It doesn't look altered. It looks like it's an original diary. Why was he registered under Alexander if his name is Alan R? I can't find him on Find a Grave, and I can't find his original stuff, his original birth certificate, or none of that stuff. Neither of these identities can I find any information on. Well, John Armstrong tracked down Mr. Alan R. Feld. And this is what he wrote. I'll just give you a summary of what Armstrong wrote about him. Armstrong wrote that Alan R. Feld changed his social security number, but he did not change his name, and he did not move from the house that he had been living in before he changed his social security number. When he was approached, he denied being the Alan R. Feld who knew anything about Oswald. How do we interpret this? Was he threatened? Why is his name different? Why does some of the information he provides contradict other information we have? I don't know. I hate using Feld as a, as a resource or a reference in any way, shape, or form. However, some of the stuff he says seems to check out. But let me throw another possibility in there. 
His statements were backdated, meaning he was briefed after the fact and told to say these things, to muddy the water. Because remember, part of what the CIA does is nothing more than deception, right? Nothing more than keeping you off the trail by muddying the water. Maybe that's what Feld was doing. We also have, this also brings up some issues with the statement, what's his name? Charles Goodwin. Or was it Donald Goodwin? Let me see if I can find the statement here. So Donald Goodwin, Donald Lloyd Goodwin, photographer at Elgin Davis Studios, 966 South Vermont in Los Angeles. This is a statement taken by the FBI on May 22nd, 64. Goodwin stated that he served in the United States Marine Corps from 53 to, 50, to June 59. His serial number was 1448272. He received an honorable discharge from the United States Marine Corps in June of 1959 at Camp Pendleton. He completed six years of service. Uh, Goodwin stated that he recalls that in late 56 or early 57, he was returned to the United States from overseas assignment and was sent to Camp Pendleton. At this time, he was a communications specialist and had the rating of sergeant. He was assigned to a communication group in the 5th Marine Division made up of uh, about 20 men. He recalls that one of the Marines in this group was Private First Class Oswald. He recalls that Oswald was a radio communicator, but could not remember whether Oswald was a CW operator or a voice communicator. Goodwin remained with this group for about 90 days when he was transferred to a photographic unit. Therefore, his recollection of Oswald is very vague during the publicity following the assassination of President Kennedy. He realized that Lee Harvey Oswald was the same person as the Oswald in his group at Camp Pendleton. So, Oswald is allegedly out of Camp Pendleton by February the 26th, okay? Here he says Private First Class Oswald, but Private First Class Oswald wasn't Private First Class Oswald till May 2nd. So could his recollection have been after May 2nd at Camp Pendleton? Well, after May 2nd, he's supposed to be in Biloxi, right? Supposed to be in Biloxi. And if, here's an if, if the other Oswald is a week behind, like the documentation appears to indicate, and that Owen Dejanovich has stated that Oswald was in his, and I fucked up him previously, I made a bad assumption about Owen Dejanovich, but I'm changing my my tune here. Owen Dejanovich probably did know Harvey Oswald, and he probably was in that uh, course at Biloxi. There's some other documents I have here. Let me see if I can find them real quick um, in reference to what happened there at that at the school and the way that everything got changed really quickly. So we have numerous documents with bad dates on it. Like we have this one that says Oswald Lee H. Private AFP 12F and it's dated 325-57. Aviation Fundamental School Class P. Um, it's got all the information for the Jacksonville school, but at the bottom, it's got a date of 5357, meaning that this message was transmitted on 5357. Here, it's indicating that Oswald started the Aviation Fundamental School in Jacksonville, Florida, 32557. That's not correct. It's not correct. Based on the documentation we have, we know Oswald started that seven days before that. So here we are again with a one-week delay on notations in the paperwork. Problem I have is how the fuck are you going to have two Oswalds walking around the same place even though they're in two different classes with a you know one-week delay? I don't understand how they, anyone could think that could be pulled off. So in realizing that we have a lot of problems with Oswald in general, and as I go through like the Naval Intelligence documents and I see who signed off on his Marine Corps stuff and you got Poindexter and you have Dr. Goff and you got a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of people, it's 20, 30 people who sign off on his stuff. They have to be in on what's going on. They don't have a choice. They got to be in on what's happening. So I'm trying to find this document in particular. That I, here's another one, um, AVN Electronics Operator. This one I actually have a duplicate document of with different information. This is the Military and Civilian Occupational Specialties and Education form that you get when you're being processed out, I think. Here it says June 25th, 57, AVN Electronics Operator. 
Um, CMC, that's Commander Marine Corps. SPD, LTR, Special Directive Letter. And then it says DFJ, NAD-12. So that was a subject matter of the letter sent on May 27th, 57. Hmm. So that's another one. So we have an indication of a document showing a week late date on the Jacksonville School. We have another document showing a week late date on the Biloxi School. And I will find two or three more references to that um, that I haven't yet kind of put into my slide presentation or worked out where it's going to go. Um, but uh, this one document here I'm trying to find because it'll show the changes that they made to Oswald's course. And I think it's really important because the changes, and I, I'm, I, this is another thing I'm, I screwed up on. In my presentation I did the other day, I kind of blew this off as a simple change, but I read it wrong. I thought they were changing the number of his course from one to another, and that they were doing that because the course they were changing from was from a pre from the previous two weeks, for like two weeks prior. But that was not the case. I misread it. All right. So this is an uh, authorization form. All right. So we have a personnel action, and this happened. Uh, we have the first indication on May the 7th. Okay. So May the 7th. What we have is Oswald allegedly is already in Biloxi. He's already at Keesler Air Force Base. And it says, okay, this is another thing that's weird. Uh, I don't know if they don't give a fuck about weekends or what, but I have 4th of May, 57. And when I looked that up, that came up as like a Saturday, right? So I don't understand what the fucking schedule is here. But allegedly, that's the week he started. He starts the school. He starts his course, 27330, I believe it is. And I don't know the course number offhand. Oh, the course number offhand is 0, uh, 24047, okay? So... He gets there. He already starts the school. And after the school has already started, before the following week, his course number is changed. Okay? So this is this I found to be very, very suspect. So he starts the school, let's say the 4th, because that's what we're indicated, but that's like a Saturday, so I don't know how the fuck that's possible. Then a on the 7th of May, 57, it says that he is registered in AB27330, course 08057, and it says change to 24047, and so they do. And this brings us back to Power's testimony before the Warren Commission, because he initially states what? He initially states that he met Lee Harvey Oswald in Jacksonville in June. But he couldn't have met him in June. It had to, had to have been a mistake. But see, the combination of Power's mistakes combined with the changes to the documentation is very, very sketchy to me. Very sketchy. Why, after he's already in the course, would they change the course to a different number? And that change was made on the 8th of May, 57. And this is another notation it says. It changed from the assignment of Oswald being assigned to the 3386th student squad. It says now... W O W A C A D V A slash C one. Oh, it's not it's not W it's non academy non A C A D V A C one adjust. So why was he removed from the thirty three eighty sixth student squadron and put in the non academic V A slash C one? 
It's like he was taking out of an official program and put in a non-official program, at least on paper. That's what it feels like to me. Then we have a notation here, uh, another line on personnel action. This is dated 11th of June, 57. But it says graduated from AB 27330, effective 18 June, 57, which is a week later. Weird, huh? So another thing I noticed in going over all these records is that one of the documents attached to Powers, uh, and, alleged, and, and it's in Oswald's file as well, it says that the course convenes on April the 24th. But it doesn't have any other information on there. I mean, we're assuming that's the Biloxi stuff, right? Because it's a couple weeks beforehand. Well, it just so happens to be that Jerry Hemming, when you go through his documentation on the Marines, he was there at Biloxi, April the 24th, in that course. So, that's interesting. But I don't really connect Hemming to Oswald in any way. I mean, Hemming has claimed that he met Oswald. And he said when Oswald met him, it seemed like Oswald knew a lot about him. And he's like, he felt that he was an intelligence operative. That's what he felt. Of course he was. I mean, of course he was an operative. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up, uh, I want to talk more about these military records because they, they, they are very telling. But you're not going to find, um, you're not going to find the records of Oswald's cohorts in the military where you should find them. For some reason, for some reason they were tacked on to the last 50 pages of the Jerry Hemming file even though Powers and these guys have absolutely nothing to do at all with Jerry Hemming. Oh, one thing about Jerry Hemming I didn't even realize until I started going through his paperwork is that he actually lived in Opalaka for a while. Interesting, huh? All right, so we're going to hop into some of these records here. We're going to start with Owen Dejanovich. We've got records for Owen Dejanovich, Powers, Aug. Who else? Um, John uh, Heindel. All right, so Owen Dejanovich joins the 29th of October, 56. Oswald joined on the 24th, and he got to training the 25th. Here it looks like Dejanovich, Dejanovich starts on October 31st, 56 at MCRD, which is San Diego. He'll be there through, looks like January 24th, 57. And from there, he's at ICT training also. He'll be at ICT training, which I'm assuming now is just combat training. Why the fuck they got three kinds of training called ICT training? Doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, then he'll get to Jacksonville March 21st, 57. He'll be done at Jacksonville May 10th one week after Oswald, allegedly. And then he's down at Casco, HQBN, HQMC. Again, I don't know why the fuck they don't just put Biloxi. Everybody who went to fucking radar school in Biloxi has Casco, HQBN, HQMC, which is Alexandria fucking Virginia. So there's major obfuscation around all of these guys who were in radar school. Why the fuck they don't just put radar school is beyond me. And just like everybody else, Owen Dejanovich gets sent down to El Toro to participate in the August draft. But here's a problem that I have. It says here he's not expected to show up in El Toro till the 19th of July. Oswald's was the 9th of July, but both of them have a September 12th, 57 date. So they were both on the same boat, or should be at least. And from there, Owen Dejanovich doesn't see Oswald again for quite some time. I think then he works with him at MACS 9. So the only person he ever interacted with is Harvey Oswald, as far as we can tell. His uh, career seems kind of uneventful. He spent some time in the brig. Hmm... 
what else? Anything else special here? Discharge 28, October 62. I mean, no, nothing here looks uh, anything special at all. Didn't seem like he was anything outstanding. All right, so we've got Zach Stout. Zach Stout's another one. Trying to read through what he, you know, what, through his statements, kind of hard to determine who he was with. Let me see. He was at Casco HQB and HQMC from the 19th of February to the 20th of February. So he, see, Casco HQ, uh, MC, HQBN can mean anything. It can just fucking mean anything. But here, if it's preceded by Jacksonville, then it's an indicator that it's Biloxi. And here we go from the 7th of January till 20th of February. That's what that is. Yeah, there we go. That's the six week period. He probably graduated at the end of February 57. Then he's in the brig for a week in April and May. So who the hell knows what's going on there? So I've gone over all these records of Heindel and all these guys. The weird thing about Heindel is there's a guy who looks just like Heindel um, in the hallway at the police department when Oswald's getting transferred. So I think it's kind of weird. I'll have to go back and double check that, but sure shit look like him to me. But it, some of these guys have to be on, on in on this scheme. There's just no way around it. No way around it any, at all. Um, all right. Richard Call, he's another one. Pops up in the list of people who knew Oswald. I'm very slowly but surely making a, a a very detailed list of everybody who knew Oswald and when and where and all that stuff. Richard Og, he's another one. He was a supervisor. But uh, yeah, Daniel Powers, Daniel Patrick Powers, I believe is his name. That guy, there's just something up with him. Something up with his with his statements on, on Oswald. So, all right, um, let's go over the, we're going to wrap up here with um, Kerry Thornley's military record. Because Kerry Thornley's a fucking liar. Kerry Thornley's balls deep in the assassination. He shot J.D. Tippett. He posed as Oswald all over the place. He's arrested out of the balcony of the Texas theater. So he's he's uh, all kinds up in this. And what we get is, he allegedly was graduating high school in... 56. And according to him, when you read his statements, he didn't, he was in the reserves, meaning he didn't do anything. And then in 58, he joins, and then he knows Oswald sometime in 59, and then he goes to Atsugi, and he's out by like the end of 60, which would wrap up his four years, but it's actually four plus years because he enlisted on 28th of May 56. And like I said, the way he plays it off, he only did two years, but he lied. He did more than four years. He did four and a half to five years straight. Didn't fuck school. I don't even know what he did with school. He probably got his um, GED here. But it starts out uh, May 56. He joins the enlists. Um, he goes through basic training 31st of August 56 through September 56. Then he goes to, let me see, looks like he goes to Pico, California where he's a basic AAA man. I don't know. AAA is amphibious assault, if I'm not mistaken. So he's training from basically September of 56. He then he has some leave January 31st of 57. Um, he is, well, there's actually a big gap here. There's a big gap in his record. And then July 31st, uh, 57, he's still at Pico. And then he goes into training. A-N-F-L-D-T-R-A. That's field training. So from August 17th to 31st, he's doing some kind of field training. Then he transfers 14th, September 57. Then he goes to MACS 18. This is September of 57. Remember, he's, it's, he's been in over a year now. And he's supposed to be in high school. Uh, Fifth Battery U.S. Marine Corps, PICO. He's still at PICO, but now he's doing something called retraining. January. He's retraining through January 31st of 58. Holy shit. Yeah, so that's like five months he's tra- doing retraining. We don't, we don't know what he's retraining on. But after he goes through retraining, July 31st, he takes a basic AVN um, controller operator course. That's the basic, That's from what I can tell, that's not AVN electronics. That's basic AVN controller operator. That's flight school. It appears he went to flight school. 
that's probably what the retraining was. The retraining was flight school. And then we have, he's at, same thing, he's, still, he's at Los Alamitos. He's at Los Alamitos for a long time, and Los Alamitos has a joint training center where, like, all branches of the military meet, I'm assuming, including CIA. Then, here we go, August 16th of 58, to active duty training. So he's still training. So he's in training for like goddamn ever. Max 18, still at Los Alamitos. So he's doing training. And then October 1st, 58, it appears he transfers as an AVN electronics operator. So at what point, where did he take the fucking electronics operator course? I don't see him. He's not, a, well, I totally found a completely unrelated photo to one of the, one of the electro, uh, electronic courses that they took at uh, Biloxi. And I swear to God, it's, it's got Kerry Thornley in it. I swear it is, but I can't fit it into this anywhere. So that should tell you something. Like people are not always where they seem to be on these marine diaries. Uh, but yeah, then he's an electric, uh, an AVN electric, op- an electric operator. And then he's stationed at, at uh, MACS4, which I believe is El Toro, not Santa Ana, but El Toro. And then from there, he will transfer March 18th, 59 to Oswald's unit. And he will be there till the 29th of May. So he really only knows Oswald for a couple months. He only knows Oswald from March to July while he's in. But see, that's enough. All he needed to do was be around him to understand him, to learn his mannerisms, to see what he was going to be doing. And then from there, where does he go? He goes to Atsugi, where he starts doing an investigation into Oswald, right? So, Kerry Thornley is a lying scumbag. Um, So, by 25th of February, 1960, he joins... M-A-B-S-11. I don't know where this is. Oh, it's MAG-11, so it's probably still at, yeah, still at Sugi. And guess what he's doing out there? He's a training assistant, meaning he's training people. He's not out there learning shit. He's training people. Then from there, he's transferred again. June 19th, 1960. To a temporary duty assignment. A TAD is a temporary duty assignment. And his primary duty will be duty instruction ABC SCOL. So what the fuck? He's going to more training. Here's this is the weird thing. He's been he's been doing training for 80% of his military career. It's now June 1960. He's supposed to be getting out in like two or three months. But they're still sending him to more training. Why are they sending him to more training? Then he goes back to um, El Toro, August of 60, and he joins as an AVN electronics operator. It appears that's what he does. And then at some point he goes back to H&HS, which is headquarters squadron, where they, which is where they get you at when you're done, you're out. So this guy just did four and a half fucking years straight in the military when he swore to everyone in like garrison that he only did two years. I should tell you everything you need to know about that fucking guy. One thing really interesting about Kerry Thornley, and I'm going to... What can I find this? Here? So Kerry Thornley, at, 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 a, at a couple points, let me see it. MAC, he, he's supposed to be MACS1, which is out of Atsugi from the 14th of September to 29th of October 59. But he's not. How do you get stationed at MACS1 July 4th? Oh, so he must have flown back. He had to have come back. Well, this doesn't make any fucking sense at all because allegedly he came back in like what October of sixty. But why would he go to why would he go there July fourth just to come back? You know, some of these notations on these fucking marine documents. If they just wrote in plain fucking English, it would make things a lot easier. So Kerry Thornley's a liar, but uh, he goes to Washington D- D.C. for a month, a little more than a month. And the reason for him to go to Washington, D.C., which he never mentions to anybody, is that he was awarded a commendation on, way back in May, it says, this is January 59, but it's indicating that in May of 58, for participating in the technique of instruction competition. So Kerry Thornley allegedly scored first place in this technique of instructor competition 
And from there, he sent to Washington, D.C. That sounds like a whole bunch of bullshit. Kerry Thorny is a fucking liar. He was most certainly an active participant in the assassination. And it appears to me that everything he did in the military post Oswald, meaning, I would say, well, he's doing nothing but training in all these different areas, flight and avian electronic operator and amphibian assault and all this stuff. This guy is not just some low-level nobody. I mean, this guy might have tried to come off like he was some sort of fucking hippie, you know, dystopian guy, but no. No, he spent four and a half fucking years immediately pre, pre, pre predating that, 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 that bohemian hippie era for him with four plus years in the military. And then remember how he starts talking about, oh my God. So when did he go to this Washington, D.C. school? He went to this in Fe uh, to October 15th, so almost leading up to 1960. But he says that after he met Oswald, he started to talk back to his superiors and, and not give a fuck about the military. Oh, really? So you're not giving a fuck about the military, but you're simultaneously going to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. to learn something there, some sort of competition that you learned, and you go on to be a training assistant in the, in the Marines. What a fucking liar. So, I'm always interested in like the reserve dates, meaning like you get out, you get out this year, but then you have two years on the books as reserve. One thing I found is that reserve is cover for intelligence many times. No, look at Tulsi Gabbard. Her whole fucking life is in the military reserves, but that bitch works for fucking Psychological Operations Command. Like, fuck her. That's a whole other conversation, though. But these people, they use the reserves as their excuse, you know, because you got to go, like, what, one weekend a month and two weekends a year or some shit? Yeah, yeah, that's how they get out of their regular job to go work for the CIA. So that's Kerry Thornley's record. It's very troubling to me. Um... I couldn't find any other documentation on Kerry Thornley and why his shit got stuck in the Jerry Hemming file. I have no idea. See, when you go through Jerry Hemming's file, you also get files on Paul Murphy. Who else? You got Kerry Thornley. Um, come on, open the next page. William Trail. William Trail is going to be a good one. I have to go through his stuff and compare all the records there, but William Trail was a good witness. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, these military records are fascinating. There's all kinds of holes in them. There's all kinds of problems. Um, Oswald clearly wasn't where he said he was. Nobody seems to be where they say they were. And hopefully I can get through this. I, I have a feeling I'm getting very close to cracking some things here. If I can really work out these dates on, on why some of them in, in Oswald's file are a week delayed and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, the, and that's another thing. Um, in going over the medical stuff, and I'll talk about this medical stuff really quickly. So, on the basic duty sheet that we looked at, and when you look at the exact dates, you really can't tell what's happening. So that's why a lot of the people who were uh, not down with the idea that there was a Harvey and a Lee, and that one of them was at Atsugi and the other was in Taiwan... Because they thought that single stamp that showed at Sugi was actually for the MACS-1, and that would be stamped wherever they went, which is complete bullshit. Um, the additional facts that I have found that completely debunk the notion that Oswald was only in Taiwan and not back at Atsugi is because when you go into this transcript that I found, thanks to John Armstrong, when you go into the transcript, all those dates... Um, where it says like September twenty, September sixteenth, September you know twenty seventh. Well, all those dates back in September of fifty eight, where he's got gonorrhea and anal bleeding. He had anal bleeding for four months. Jesus Christ! All that stuff. When you go into the transcript, it has far more information that was seemingly deleted from the main record. Uh, it talks about every single day. There's a notation. Patient this and this, patient this and this. So every single day, he was there in the infirmary. And there's notations for every single day. Another thing was the argument over whether or not Oswald was on the boat um, because of a reference to Mainside, right? So 
the the the, Harv- the people who don't believe that there was a Harvey and a Lee, they think he was on the boat to Taiwan. That's where he got all checked out, and that's completely false. Because I found in the notation they sent him to Mainside, right? Mainside is actually when I dug into it, there's Atsugi was basically had two halves. It had East Side and Main Side. That was it. That was what made up Atsugi, the base at Atsugi. So when he was sent to Mainside to get checked out, that is at Atsugi. And there's a reference to East Side. Oh yeah, at the top of the page. At the top of the page, it said Navy Hospital 3835 East Side, and it was a stamp that said East Side. Okay? So clearly at Sugi's hospital, NAS Navy 3835, is on the east side of, of the base, and the lab was on main side. And I found that reference. I found a, a, a Marine who talked about specifically how the camp was set up, and I now have that documented. So now we can say unquestionably, 100% certainty. There were two Oswalds in two different places, particularly at the time when Taiwan was going on September, what was it? Uh, September 20th through October the 7th. And man, is there some major lying in these documents? So every reference I find says that Oswald got transferred back from Taiwan on the 5th of October. It's, it's a lie. It's a blatant lie. It's been changed in all the documents. The incident that he had is confirmed by a guy named... Oh, what the fuck was this guy's name? It wasn't Beach. It was... Um, shit. I don't recall. Anyway, we now have absolute corroboration of Oswald being at Atsugi, as opposed to having been on that boat. So... Gosh, this research has been really all all consuming for me lately. Um, I've been literally putting in twelve hour days. I'm exhausted right now, just staring at the screen, and my fucking eyes hurt. But um, that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, one last notation: I got a couple more uh, pieces of information on the tonsils because he had his tonsils out in like forty five. But here on uh, May twenty third, fifty eight, it looks like he had a top problems with his left tonsil. And the, I can't even tell that that's May because it's a little bit. It's a little looks like a J, but it's not a J. There's no letters that look like J. Um, it might be a five. It might be a one. Five twenty three fifty eight. Where would Oswald have been? He should have been back in Atsugi at that time. Oh, um, yeah, that's gonna do it for today, guys. I'll be back on Monday, and I'll see you guys then. Thanks. <laughs>